These rocky shores Where I call home Where my heart longs to be Whenever I roam It's these rocky shores It's where I long to be Yes, it's these rocky shores their home to me Whenever I leave here It hurts me so With tears in my eyes Oh, I hate to go There ain't no work And the kids need new clothes The bills need them So I'll find my spot These rocky shores where I call home Where my heart longs to be Whenever I roam Yes, these rocky shores It's where I long to be Yes, these rocky shores They're home to me Where did it all go? The life I once had on the ocean's dead road. My tears in my eyes and my head in my hands. Away from my family, I hope they understand. That is these rocky shores where I call home. That's where my heart longs to be. Whenever I roam It's these rocky shores Where I long to be It's these rocky shores They're home to me Yes, these rocky shores They're home Good evening, welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include New TAGS program announced Military exercises are being carried out in the Stephenville area The last of the artifacts was moved to the new museum Friday marked the end of another school year These stories plus community events, BBS Playbill, Off the Rack and more coming up after this. If we keep taking from the land, it won't have anything left to give. In the end, we'll all lose. But there are ways to help. They don't require complicated technology, and they don't cost much. They're techniques inspired by local people. USC Canada is working with partners in Africa, building fences to protect farmland from wind erosion laying simple catchments to trap scarce rainwater and coax food crops to grow, planting saplings to help reforest barren land. It's starting to work, and it doesn't take a miracle. What it does take is long-term commitment so that today's children will have something to inherit and more to pass on. I'm Bruce Coburn for USC Canada, 56 Spark Street, Ottawa. A new TAGS program was announced on Friday morning. The new program, referred to by many as TAGS 2, did not sit well with the local union executive. Eileen, what's your reaction to the post-TAGS program that was announced this morning? It was very upsetting, Dave. I, I think, to me, it meant the end of our town. As a Black Friday for Virgil, there's nothing there for the plant workers, there's nothing for the people that come off TAGS in May, 
And the way they were talking, it don't look like there's going to be early retirement for the people that come off in that. Our only hope, I guess, is to try and push something to get our fish plant reactivated because we're just not going to make it on the new package they gave us. Edie, you had a bit, uh, held a meeting with the business people in the community today. Uh, what was the purpose behind that meeting? Well, I guess uh, it was uh, Dave Dicker coming in from Cornerbrook. He just brought in uh, uh, the meeting that he had this morning, what was called this morning. And I guess we brought in the business people because they're going to be affected uh, with it as well as what uh, we are. And uh, they're the ones who are going to have to shut down their business as well as people leaving uh, Virgil. So I guess we'll all try to put our heads together and uh, see what we can come up with and see can we change some of those things that went on today. Robert, what were some of the uh, concerns that were brought forth by the business owners at today's meeting? Well, Dave, uh, coming out of the announcement that was made today, uh, the business people was uh, was concerned. Uh, I mean, uh, about the, uh, the the topics that uh, that arose from that, but it was also uh, concerned about. Uh, I think we should put a lot of emphasis now, like Edie said, uh, or Odin said, on getting the uh, the local fish plant up and running, so that uh, so that we can maintain the community we got here with a population of right now, I guess, approximately 1,900 people, because uh, for sure on this what announced this morning that I can see people uh, getting this lump sum for sure. Those people, the younger generation, uh, getting this money as a lump sum, and then uh, sort of saying, I guess that is. Uh, funding for me to take my family and, uh, and baggage and uh, move on uh, to somewhere and look for work. But, uh, I mean, the message that we want to get across is uh, that's not the case. You know, we don't want to see that happen. Uh, the bottom line is that we got to uh, push now uh, and, and, and pressure the, uh, the levels of government and try to get whatever fish we can and, uh, and put in this plant and uh, hopefully keep the uh, people that uh, uh, it's probably taken about uh, looking elsewhere for work and try to keep those back and uh, put jobs in that fish plant and uh, maintain the community, uh, especially and, and increase the population if we got to. I mean, that is the bottom line. Okay, one of the, the other things mentioned at the meeting was that uh, it had to be made clear that uh, Virgil had to get in the foreground and be recognized as a community that wanted to survive sort of thing. Uh, that was discussed at the meeting. Uh, what plans are being made to secure that? Well, right now, Dave, we have added two extra people to our committee, and we'll have a meeting Tuesday night and see what we can come up with to secure some of those funds for Virgil. To add to that is, uh, I guess, yeah, you know, like you, you just mentioned there, especially uh, bringing up that development fund, I guess it was part of one of the uh, one of the categories that they had pointed out in this uh, in this post stage or new package, they got a call. Uh, I guess as a town as a whole, I mean, what we got to do is get out there and, and be uh, be one of the first and to show the uh, the level of government whoever's going to have the controlling say uh, to where the uh, the money is being spent. Uh, and, and we certainly hope that it's going to be put in place as uh, number one, like Virgil. That's going to be suffered. Uh, that's going to uh, be suffering the most because I mean, uh, we got only only one thing here that we can depend on, and that is the fishing industry. And uh, and if we need a development fund to uh, to help us to uh, get someone back in this community uh, to operate their fish plants, if if it's funding that is required to help someone, whether it's Bill Burry or Joe Blow, I mean. Uh, we certainly hope that there will be a part of that funding coming our way so that we'll have something uh, that we can offer to to uh, the operator of that fish plant. And any other business that uh, want to come in this community, that uh, there's always room. And uh, I'm sure if there's money available uh, that we got in, a, in, a, in an account here, and there's uh, people out there that want to set up an industry that's going to employ people in this community, by all means, that uh, this is what this money would be used for. And we want our share the biggest share. Okay, yeah, you mentioned about the uh, other industries as well as the fishery. Uh, with government trying to cut down on the number of people waiting for the fishery to come back, do you think that money from this fund would actually go to uh, help upgrade fish plants? Well, uh, I don't know actually. 
actually go directly to, to upgrade fish plants, but uh, uh, right now, I mean, uh, as everyone knows, uh, we're fighting along with sea freeze uh, to get a, a, the transitional job fund application put through uh, so that we can get the Argentine put in this plant here. Uh, whether it's uh, going to be able to use for such thing as to try to get a fish plant open or not, uh, I know what you're saying, they're trying to get as many people ahead of the fishery as possible. But if that's not the case, then I guess we're going to have to use the uh, use the scheme as uh, we got money there, and, and then we got to start looking for industries that is not connected with the fishery, because the community uh, of this size, and if we want to maintain our population and, and stop the uh, migration, then we're going to have to uh, I guess we're going to have to go and search and do what we can to try and uh, and draw people in there to set up, whether it's an industry that employs one person or ten people or uh, twenty people. I mean, every industry or business that can set up in here and employ people and, uh, and take people and employ them that was the, in the past working with the fishery, then uh, I guess you can say that, you know, in long those lines, they would be getting them out of the fishery as such and into a different uh, workplace. So, Edie, do you feel that uh, the business owners that were present at today's meeting uh, were in support of your efforts? Yes, I think that they, they uh, do, Dave, because, I mean, it's their business and they got to help to uh, keep this town together because, I mean, if uh, there's so many people leaving, I mean, they're not going to have all the choice to shut down their business. So I would say we have the support on anything that uh, they can help us with to uh, help with, even if it's something new to put in this community that uh, we'll, we will be talking to them again. Everywhere you looked in Stephenville on Monday, the presence of the military was quite evident. Driving across the old army base in Stephenville was like an excerpt from a show of MASH. A military hospital was set up at the Harmon Dragway. Beaches along Stephenville Crossing were lined with tanks and other military equipment as well. There was no trouble to see a tank hidden in the trees along the roadway as well. From Stephenville's little Port Harmon, you could see the military boats off in the harbor. Due to the military exercises that were taking place, certain streets were closed to the public for different periods of the day. 
the military activity brought tourists out in droves in the Stephenville area. The final artifact was moved from the site of the old museum to the new one on Tuesday of this past week. Council workers brought the anchor from the old swivel out from the old museum to place by the cannon near the new museum on Tuesday of this past week. Four students have been hired to operate the museum this summer. The museum will open tomorrow to the public. By the end of this week, the museum should be working its regular hours, which are from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday, and from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sundays. The anchor from the swivel marks the last of the artifacts that were at the old museum. Once the anchor was in place, all of the displays were complete for the opening of the new museum. The general public is encouraged to come by and see the artifacts displayed at the new facility. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review coming up in just a moment. Here in Canada, we've made great strides in advancing women's causes, yet we still have a long way to go, both here and in the rest of the world. USC Canada is taking steps, supporting savings and loans programs for women in developing countries. When you reach out, you find we're really not so far apart. This is June Callwood. Please lend your support to USC Canada, 56 Spark Street, Ottawa. Students went to school on Friday afternoon to pick up their final report card for this school year. Like most primary classrooms, Ms. Tucker's grade three class had just as many parents as students on Friday afternoon as report cards, diplomas, and other awards were presented to the students. Report cards on the way. Matthew School also visited various classes offering words of encouragement over the summer. Safe summer, and I just want to remind you that when you're riding your bikes or going swimming this summer, be very careful because we want to see you back there safe and sound in September. And I also like to 
to say good luck to Archie. I hear that you're leaving us again, Archie. And good luck in your new school. Work hard. You did really well while you were here. We want to see you continue there. Thank you, and every, have a nice summer, everybody. We hope you have a nice summer, Mr. Dillon, as well. Kindergarten and grade 6 students at A.J. Matthews School held their graduations on Monday and Tuesday of this past week. We've all been aware of the decreasing enrollment at our school system, but it's never been more evident than at this year's kindergarten graduation with seven students graduating and moving on to grade 1. Zachary, Lewis, Thomas, Foldier. The grade 6 graduation had larger numbers, but still small compared to previous years.
Stay with us for Off the Rack, Community Events, and the BVS Playbill. All that, after this. Every year, an area twice the size of Nova Scotia disappears into the Sahara Desert. African lands, once fertile, become barren. Nothing grows. No animals graze. But in Mali, USC-supported programs have helped villagers reclaim thousands of hectares of land. Help turn back the sands of time. I'm Bruce Coburn for USC Canada, 56 Spark Street, Ottawa. Off the Rack. This week as we scanned our tape racks, we came across a video of a story we covered a few years back as the local weather office was entering its final month before being totally automated. Here's a look back now to June 1995. The Bergio Weather Office has been in operation since 1966. The temperature and forecast has been calculated by residents of Bergio. Reports have indicated that as of July 31st, the three employees currently working at the Weather Office will be laid off and the station will become fully automated. The office is currently automated from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. each day which resulted in one layoff a few years ago. As far as the employees are aware, when the station becomes fully automated in August, there will not be anyone employed to maintain or oversee its operation. There has been problems experienced with the automated system during its night operation in the past with inaccurate readings, but this has not affected the decision to close the Virgil Weather Station. Good evening and welcome to the community event segment of tonight's broadcast on Run the Green. The resident family council TV bingo held on Wednesday was won by Brenda Kasser. Congratulations, Brenda. The museum committee will be holding a TV bingo on Wednesday, June the 24th. Cards are a dollar each or six for five dollars and are available in most stores around town. If your group or organization has an upcoming event plan, we would be happy to advertise it for you. 
You can contact the BBS office by Wednesday of each week to have items included in this portion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Tune in on Tuesday at 7 p.m. for Pansy's Garden. Try your luck on Wednesday at 7 p.m. by playing Museum Committee TV Bingo. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Dave Cooper. Good night.